Cyber Cab, yeah, it's real. I've seen it, I've touched it, and I've talked to the engineers. This is a second part of that uh, whole uh, series. Today we're gonna be talking about the drivetrain system uh, because there's a lot to share. So as a reminder, I drove down to San Jose, 12 hours uh, to Santa Rosa, two more hours. So 14 hours each way from Tuesday to Thursday. Worth it, totally worth it. Uh, I'm Brian, welcome to Futuraza. <laughs> So what we got going on is, uh, what is the drivetrain? And uh, we're gonna cover the drivetrain, we're gonna cover some uh, things around the drivetrain, and uh, maybe tomorrow we'll talk about, is it full meat driving or not? Can they make a human version? Uh, or maybe I'll get into that today, we'll see. So the first question is, dual motor? Is it all wheel drive? Is it is it front, rear, what, what, what do we got going on there? Now, Bert and Ken, my friends who are retired, engineers uh, in the automotive space who have between them two careers worth of expertise. Together we came up with the hypothesis that it would be rear wheel drive single motor due to torque steer. Don't want to get torque steer. And you know, eh. and single motor because you don't need all that acceleration. And maybe it would be, you know, and there's enough regen from the rear wheels. Or is there? That was a question I got to ask. So uh, I asked the first engineer, and I'm not gonna name names, but I was there, the engineers were there, they know who they are. I asked the first one, uh, single motor, rear rear drive, and he said, ha-ha, and, uh, and we'll announce it next year probably. I said, okay, well, worth a shot. I go to the, a different engineer and I said, I just have a question about regen on rear wheel drive cars. My buddy Jan from Tesla Fix has a rear wheel drive uh, Model 3. Do you get all the regen? Do you get any regen? Do you get some, most, how much? And he said, you'd be surprised, you get just about all of it. Rear wheel drive doesn't have a problem with that. Think about cruise control. Cruise control uh, on a car does most of its braking on a gas powered car through the rear wheels, through the drive system. Not so different, uh, except that of course you just lose the energy instead of reclaiming it. And then he added, but, that doesn't matter because this one's front wheel drive. Here's your answer. Single motor, front wheel drive. Also part of the reason the frunk doesn't open. The other reason the frunk doesn't open, there's no storage up there, is because the frunk is so small. If you look at the amount of hood space compared to any of the other Teslas, it's much smaller. When you're trying to uh, dis you know, get rid of the energy from an accident, what you need is area volume of space, not empty space. The frunk itself, the empty part, doesn't help the collision. Uh, what helps is, you know, having crunchable materials that can be displaced uh, so you can disperse the energy. So not only is the hood shorter, but the car is narrower, significantly narrower and lower. So you've got much less frontal surface area. You got less frontal surface area, you need more, uh, you need to use more of it to stop a frontal collision. Now with accidents, frontal collision should be rare. You have to control for all kinds of stuff when you're building a car, mostly driver behavior. If you're doing all the driving with your little robo chips, you can control that part of it. Now you can't stop people from rear ending you. You can't stop people from T-boning you. I mean, you can mitigate that a little bit, but the reality is the frontal accidents you can absolutely control, tone those down significantly. So what does that mean? Uh, that means, he says, because it's not full meat driven, because I asked all the engineers, it's not gonna be a, is there gonna be a human version? Are we gonna, are we gonna see the NV91 spring back up out of this? And they said, no. Another gentleman asked, well, but Elon said $25,000 car. And one of the engineers said, there are many ways to get to a $25,000 car. This one isn't it. This is autonomy. This is just a robo taxi. This is just a cyber cab. So that part settled. And I went through all the things that I theorized about the structural back wall on the interior. Yes, you can't knock that out. There'll be a video coming about that. There will be a video coming about my actual experience there where you can see me getting into the car and poking it and all that. That's coming. But in the meantime, 
can it be human driven? Well, all the systems are robo taxi dependent. I said, oh, right, you can use a much smaller motor, potentially the one without rare earth materials. Is that what this is going to be? And he said, well, this vehicle is designed with that philosophy in mind. Elon said, we're going to be building motors without rare earth. We are hoping that that is the philosophy for this vehicle. While not a direct confirmation, it's very close to a confirmation and it would fit with what we know. And I said, well, you don't need 300 horsepower. I said, you don't need 120 horsepower. He said, no, you need very little horsepower because you also don't need to go 110. I said, oh, that's right. This, you can gear it to only the speed limit, the highest speed limit. I said, and the highest speed limit of the country is, it's gotta be what? The San Antonio Expressway, which is I think 85 miles an hour. And then I paused and I said, 80? And he said, with confidence, it's 85. Okay, so it is geared. Now you don't need to handle every speed range just up to 85. You don't need to handle exceptional torque, just enough to get out of the way of other cars and keep passengers comfortable. You don't need the kind of shocks that would let you be thrown it into corners. Nobody wants that if they're not in control. A robo race car is a thing. This is not a robo race car. And I said, well, that's great. So that means you've got lighter brakes, lighter shocks, lighter suspension, lighter uh, tires and wheels. And he said, yeah, yeah. And they were also talking about a lot of the other efficiencies in terms of weight. And he said, and a lighter battery. Oh yeah, the battery will be lighter. Now I will have, uh, I guess I could mention on this one, I guess I can mention on this one, uh, the batteries. What, what chemistry are you going to use? Which form, I mean, is it gonna be, is it gonna be an LFP, which means maybe a blade battery? Is it gonna be, uh, 4680s? And the short answer is, uh, it is battery agnostic. They can put in it anything they want. The pack is designed to be semi-structural, not full structural, like you would see in a Cybertruck or a 4680 model of Model Y, but semi-structural. So that means you can put anything in it. And I said, is this going to be built in a factory or around the world? And they said, this will be built globally. So globally means it has to be battery agnostic. They have to be able to use LFPs in China. They have to be able to use whichever cells make it to Europe, most likely NMCs. It, and it also depends when it comes out, because if these are made in the US today, there are no LFPs, certainly not in the kind of quantity we would need for a, a mass produced vehicle. And there probably aren't enough 4680s yet. It has to be battery agnostic. And the battery can be quite small. And on the drivetrain, I said 5.5 miles per kilowatt hour. I don't believe you. And he said, too high or too low? I said, it's, it's too low. I bet you can do model threes. I've seen them getting four miles to the kilowatt hour. Well, why, why is this only 5.5? And he said, 5.5 is the number we are saying. I said, is it sandbag? He said, it's the number we are saying. So, it's going to get better than 5.5 because it is lighter than a Model 3. And how much lighter? Well, I got two different answers. I got it in pounds and I got it in kilograms and the conversion doesn't quite work. The kilogram answer I got was hundreds of kilograms lighter. And the other answer I got was a thousand pounds lighter than a Model 3. Now just look at a Model 3 next to a cyber cab. You can see there's less atoms, fewer atoms. There's no glass roof, the glass is quite heavy. Currently it's all plastic, carbon fiber. That may stick around, if not, it'll be something else, uh, but not stainless steel and probably not steel. But everything they've done is with this approach in mind. Uh, another topic we can discuss would be something like um, uh, the switches. I know a lot about the switches now and which ones are critical. I know about this, the interior, more info about the interior of the seats will adjust, they will have to by law. Uh, there will be teleoperators by regulation. It has to happen. I know which buttons and where they go and why. 
So those are questions we can address. As a reminder, next Wednesday, this coming Wednesday at uh, 1230 p.m. Pacific in the early afternoon or middle of the afternoon if you're on the East Coast, I'll be doing a CyberCab Ask Me Anything because I was at this event. I got there three hours before it started. The event ran two hours and I stayed probably 40 minutes past that while they were trying to push us out the door. We had a great time. I got to ask every question I wanted and I got to listen to all the other great questions being asked. I have some insights. This is why it's important for me to get to events. So guys, uh, ask your questions, ask them away. Three hours later, Brian here, I forgot to mention on the torque steering issue. Uh, you know, how big of a deal is it? Well, I said to the engineer, um, yeah, torque steering wouldn't be such a big deal. Uh, now what torque steering is, is when you are, when you have front wheel drive and you apply acceleration while, while, I mean, while turning the wheel, you can lose control. You can lose control and you'll feel it in the wheel. The wheel will kind of crank on you. And I said, uh, oh, because the torque will be so low, no one's gunning it. No one's racing. You might not notice it. And he said, ah, no, you won't notice it because there's no steering wheel. And because our traction control is so good with electric motors that it's not going to be something that the occupants of the vehicle would even feel. Worth noting, <laughs> the reason uh, Bert, a uh, former Ford engineer, thought it would be rear, rear drive front steer is because while all the things I just said are true, it's not always helpful if you're trying to go up a hill in wet snow and it's slippery. You'd be better off to have the front wheels still able to steer a bit, even if the, the go wheels are losing some traction. This is what happens when you have a design team in California. Maybe they haven't considered that. Maybe it's a limited use case. Maybe in the future they'd have a rear wheel version or an all wheel version. But for now, that's how that works. So with that said, back to Brian from three hours ago. Uh, what do we miss? What do we misunderstand? Leave it into them mandatory comments below and stay tuned. Stay juicy. I cannot wait to hear from you clever robots. Oh, when are we go live?